My name is Jane and I am a teacher of English as a Second Language. For the past two years, I have been teaching an IELTS preparation course. Um, based on my experiences teaching this class, I have put together a video of myself presenting my answers to the speaking section task two, which is the section in which the test taker is given a card full of questions and then has one minute to prepare their answers. Just like a real test taker, what I did was I gave myself one minute to answer these questions. Um, please keep in mind that you are not required to tell the truth in this section. So for example, I talk about both Time Magazine and the TV show Seinfeld in some of my answers. Time Magazine is not my favorite magazine and I actually do like the TV show Seinfeld. However, those two were easier for me to talk about and easier for me to prepare for. So keep that in mind. Also pay attention to how I begin and end each of my answers. And with that, I guess, enjoy. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite magazines. Um, it's actually a pretty popular magazine worldwide. It's called Time. I actually don't read a lot of magazines. That's not really something that I prefer, but Time Magazine is a magazine that my parents always subscribed to when I was a kid. And I personally didn't have any magazines that they subscribed, like any kids' magazines. So whenever Time Magazine would come, I would look at it, I'd look at the pictures, I'd read the articles, and even though as a child, a lot of it was way above my head, I became really familiar with the news because of Time Magazine and I became accustomed to reading it and even though nowadays I don't feel like it is that great of a magazine, uh, I prefer to get my news from other sources, I still like to purchase a Time Magazine whenever I see one, take it home, look at it, have it on my coffee table, it just reminds me of home. Um, can buy it pretty much anywhere, anytime you go through the grocery store, Walmart, Kmart, any store that you're standing in line waiting to make your purchase, it's just sitting there next to you, you can pick it up, take it home, read it. Um, it typically contains just a lot of news stories, current events, um, sometimes they'll do profiles of famous people, but unlike say People Magazine which focuses on celebrities, Time Magazine focuses on politicians, businessmen, people who are doing important things for the community. Um, I think it's a really interesting magazine, not just because of my personal history with it, but also because it does contain a lot of current events and I think it's very important for all of us that we pay attention to current events. So for all of these reasons, that is why Time Magazine is interesting and one of my favorite magazines. Let me tell you about my absolute favorite leisure activity. Um, it's not the most exciting of activities, maybe from an external standpoint. If you were to watch me doing it, you would say, wow, that's super boring. But for me, this is my favorite thing to do in my free time, and it has always been my favorite thing to do in my free time, and that's reading. Um, typically, this is something I do by myself. It's not really the kind of activity you do with a group, although certainly I am actually a part of several online and real life book clubs, but I prefer to get into bed, sit on the sofa, sit in a hammock, somewhere super comfortable, relax, read a book, and I can spend all day doing this. Um, in my house, one of my favorite places to do this, other than my bed, is my hammock. It's outside um, next to my, next to where I park my car, and it's under a big tree, so it's really shady. Um, sometimes I'll have one of my dogs with me, and I'll just sit under the hammock, and I'll have some snacks with me, and I'll just sit there and read. Um, my favorite book of all time is, it's actually a series of book, it's books, it's called The Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. And I typically reread these books at least once a year. So 
anytime I'm bored, I know that all I have to do is go into my house, find either my Kindle or one of my hard copy books, and go outside to my hammock, lie down, and I can spend the rest of my day reading. Let me tell you about a TV program that I've watched a couple of times, but have never enjoyed. Um, the program is called Seinfeld, and it was really, really popular in the 1990s. I watched it a couple of times at my house, and I thought it was not interesting, and I didn't find it funny. And, you know, so many of my friends were, said to me, oh my gosh, how can you not like Seinfeld? You have to watch it again. You have to give it another chance. So over the years I've tried to watch it and every time I think this just isn't funny. So this program Seinfeld, it stars a comedian by that name, Jerry Seinfeld, and it's a situation comedy about him and his friends, but there is no plot. And the TV show actually jokes that it is a show about nothing and I couldn't agree more. It is a show about nothing. So I would watch it and there's the episode where they go and they sit and they're at some kind of restaurant and they just wait to be seated at the restaurant. That was one of the episodes I watched and I thought, how can people find this funny? It's not funny. So those are the reasons why I did not enjoy this show, even though people to this day continue to tell me I should watch it. Um, perhaps you have watched it and perhaps you like it, but for me, it is just not my cup of tea. Today I'm going to tell you about my favorite book, or to be more accurate, my favorite series of books. The books are a trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien and they're called The Lord of the Rings. These three books are set in a fantasy world called Middle-earth and it sets up sort of an archetypical struggle between the good guys and the bad guys. The good guys have as their hero a small person who is actually a hobbit, a type of being that grows to about three feet in height. And the lead hobbit, Frodo Baggins, has to take a magical ring. Sorry. He has to take a magical ring on a great journey across the land of Middle Earth in order to destroy it. If he cannot destroy the ring, then the whole of Middle Earth will be destroyed. He is helped in his quest by humans, elves, dwarves, flying eagles, a wizard, all sorts of creatures and peoples. Um, the book was actually first read to me as a small child during the period, I guess, between first and third grade. My father read the books out loud to me. It was a long, slow process because they are long. And then later when I was in middle school, I actually reread them on my own and fell in love with them all over again. Since then, I have read them at least once a year. And every single time, I still find myself loving the books and being super excited to read them. They never get old. They never get boring for me. I'm always discovering something new when I read them. Um, what I liked the most about the book was Tolkien's writing style. He's such a brilliant writer that even though he's writing about elves and dwarves and fantastical lands and fantastical creatures, it's still totally believable. What I didn't like so much, especially as I grew older, was the fact that there are not very many female characters and some of the female characters are really only mentioned in terms of their love for the male characters. So as a woman, that part is a little disappointing to me. However, the books are so well written and so entertaining that overall I have been able to overlook that one flaw. So for these reasons, this is why The Lord of the Rings has always been my favorite book. Let me tell you about an important event in United States history, um, possibly one of the most important events in US history, and that is the United States Civil War. 
Um, this war happened in the late 1800s, in the 1860s, and basically what happened was the southern part of the United States seceded, or it left the United States and tried to form its own country called the Confederacy. The northern part of the United States decided that they were not going to allow the South to leave the Union, and they went to war over it. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not an expert on history, so I can't go into a lot of detail about it, but one of the things that is so important to be aware of about the U.S. Civil War is the fact that one of the big issues was slavery. In the southern part of the United States, slavery was legal and very common. The President of the United States at the time, Abraham Lincoln, had delivered the Emancipation Proclamation to make owning slaves illegal. And if the North had not won this war, perhaps the southern part of the United States where I live today, perhaps here we would still own slaves, which is a horrible, reprehensible thing. So that is the reason why I think the United States Civil War is perhaps the most important historical event for my country, because if it hadn't happened, we would not be the country of freedom that we are known for being today. Let me tell you about a news story that I heard about very recently. I actually heard about it yesterday. Um, so I am a teacher of English as a second language, and I have a lot of students from many different countries, including from Turkey. I try to make sure that I follow news about the countries where my students are from so that I'll know what things might affect them. So yesterday, when I saw in my news feed a mention of Turkey, I wanted to click on that link and see what was going on. Uh, the story was that in the country of Turkey, the military was attempting a coup to overthrow President Erdogan. Um, while I don't know the leaders of the military coup, I do know that they were unsuccessful. The leaders of the coup called for people to support them, and President Erdogan in turn called for people to come out and support him. And I guess luckily for him, the masses came out and they were in support of the democratically elected president and they were able to stop the coup from actually succeeding. Um, I first read about this story online, I don't remember the website, but then I immediately turned on CNN and followed the news for many hours to see what would happen. Like I said, this story was very interesting to me because I have a lot of students from Turkey, so I'm very concerned about their well-being and happiness, especially when they're far away from home. So for all of these reasons, this is why that was an interesting story that I wanted to share with you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about a well-known person and if you have watched the news at all in the past year or two, you definitely know who this person is. His name is Donald Trump. Um, he became famous when I was much younger. He became famous in the 1980s for being a rich man who became even richer. He invested in a lot of real estate, made a lot of money, wrote a book about how he made a lot of money called The Art of the Deal, and basically became famous for being rich. Later, um, in I believe the early 2000s, he became famous yet again for being the host of a reality TV show called The Apprentice, in which he had different contestants compete to come and work for him, and his catchphrase was, you're fired. Um, the cue card that I was given says to tell why, admi why I admire him, except that I don't actually admire him. I think that he is a very bombastic and somewhat unpleasant individual, and it rather frightens me that he has been chosen as the Republican nominee for President of the United States. So that's right, in case you were unaware, he is currently 
running to be the next president of the United States, and currently he is the presumptive Republican nominee, but as of the Republican convention that begins next week, he will undoubtedly be their choice for their nominee. Uh, so he is a well-known person and he's very much in the news today and he's very important, which is why I chose to talk about him. Let me tell you about a very serious environmental problem that is currently facing the entire world, and that problem is global warming. The problem of global warming has existed my entire life. I am 37 years old. I don't remember when I first heard about global warming, but I was in elementary school, so it was a long time ago. I remember my teachers telling me that the earth was getting warmer every year, that this was called global warming, and that this would be a problem for all people in the future. So while I'm not sure how long this problem has existed, it has existed at least since I was a child. Um, some of the effects that it can have on people are very serious if they live near the coastal regions. So for example, I'm from Florida. We have a lot of coastal regions. As the planet gets hotter and hotter, the polar ice caps start to melt, which causes sea levels to rise. As sea levels rise, people who live near the ocean, well, their homes could be flooded and destroyed. The rising temperatures are leading to an increase in hurricanes, which again, I live in Florida. An increase in hurricanes means an increase in hurricanes hitting my state and killing or injuring citizens of the state of Florida. So these are some really terrible effects that global warming can have just on me and the state in which I live. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure how we can solve this problem. Um, as a child, of course, I was taught things like conserve energy, reduce, reuse, recycle. But do I know that these things are going to actually help prevent global warming? Unfortunately, I don't. I don't know the solution, but I do know that our scientists need to work really hard to ensure that this problem is stopped and hopefully reversed. Let me tell you about some of the different ways that you can get the news. Nowadays, we have so many choices for how we can get the news. Uh, I personally really love watching the news. I used to study politics, so for me, watching news, especially political news, is very important. Um, so I do get the news every day. I typically watch CNN, which is a TV channel that has news 24 hours a day. There are other TV channels, some are more liberal like MSNBC and some are more conservative like Fox News. So if you have a particular type of news preference, you have options. Um, I also like to watch PBS, especially the PBS NewsHour, which is another good news show on TV. If you don't have a TV, if you don't like watching TV, there are so many other ways you can get the news now. If you have access to the internet through your smartphone, a tablet, a laptop, a desktop computer, any kind of internet access, there are a plethora of news websites available that are online 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for you to get any type of news that you're interested in, whether it's politics, sports, weather, famous people, anything, it's available online. There are, of course, some apps that you can install on your phone to get news alerts. So if you're interested in a particular person or a particular topic, if there's some news event pertaining to that, your phone will beep and tell you, hey, there's some news. Um, I don't know if everybody necessarily thinks getting the news is as important as I do. I've certainly spoken with some people who even recently were unaware of some of the big events in world news. I personally think it's very important that we all stay abreast of the news so that we are informed of what's going on in our world. So because of that, I am very happy that there are so many ways that I can get the news throughout the day. 